So let's talk about language models and talk about if a child is truly at stage two, being able to pull out parts of a gestalt. We want to look ahead for that child. We want to look ahead to where that child is going to be going once he gets into stage four or beginning grammar. And let's just take the word let plus the word us um, and the contraction let's, which typically we say as a unit. So if we're thinking about how to build in gestalts from the beginning of a child's program and build in ones that are easily mitigable and think in our minds, where is that child going to go ultimately in terms of grammar? Let's is a good model. The same holds true for I'm and it's. Now, when you think about gestalts that are mitigable, one of the kinds of echolalic models that's very useful is like, I'm coming, I'm going to go to the store, I'm really over there, I'm loving this. So hearing the redundancy of I'm is very, very useful for a child to be able to get to a mitigation. It's also a lovely beginning generative grammar form, but like I'm suggesting, I'm fits both bills. So one has to just be very careful if they're mitigating at the moment that they're saying I'm, or if they're self-generating. And one rule of thumb about I'm is, if a child has isolated I, then you can say I'm might be a grammatical construction. But I will tell you quite honestly that seeing isolated I examples is fairly rare. So we will talk about that after we watch some of the movies. But this is a, just a general notion for you to think about as we move forward. Let's take again this chart. And this now brings very focused attention on why stage two and stage four can get a little um, mixed up. So besides let's and I'm, there's also it's. So if we're taking a nicely mitigable gestalt, you know, it's time for the movies. It's gonna be a great day. It's after all a wonderful vacation. You think about gestalts and you think about it's easily mitigable, infinitely useful. When kids have it's at stage two, they can say it's red, it's coming, it's more than I can chew, it's gonna be great, it's mine. So there's no it plus is there, as you can see, it's a separation from the larger gestalt. So anyway, uh, one of the people we have on Cameron's team is, is kind of the designated note taker. And you saw Cassie sitting over there with a computer in front of her taking notes. So this is Cameron is the C and Bryn is the B and I'm the M. Again, the busy videographer who kind of gets her nose into things in a good way sometimes, in a kind of disruptive way, others. Okay, so Cameron says, jump on the trampoline and uh, la and rolling and smash my face. Bryn says, oh, and Marge says, wow. And Bryn says, maybe we could do a face squish. And Bryn says, whoa, to Cameron as he's doing some acrobatics, good balance. Cameron says, and Bryn says, woohoo, ready? Cameron says, ready. Bryn says, here comes a squish. Cameron says, or, in other words, it's not quite right. Bryn says, put your head back. And Cameron says, ew, it didn't feel good. So Bryn says, ew. And then Cameron says, Katie's favorite place to be scratched. Now, in other words, that was not his favorite place to be squished. So Marge says, 
trying to think that perhaps he will finish his sentence and tell where he wants to be squished, Marge says, is where? Is recognizing that he's not going to finish that sentence, Bren jumps in and says, behind her ears, kind of like, you know, what a kitty would want. So Cameron has given up on us. So um, he says, now that, now that we're done, done at speech, let's, let's go to a different room. So the kind of gestalt quality there is that this is speech. We're done with speech. Not so much that he means that literally, like he's going to leave and go home, but it's kind of a gestalt quality to not having all of the ways of saying what he wants to say at that moment. 